Hi friends. How y'all doing? It's Friday. Oh, y'all talking already without me. How y'all doing? So, hi Christina. Hi, A Journey of Random Musings. Hi, Rosa Elena. Thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. Welcome to Sip and Stitch. My name is Carly Bell and I like to do machine embroidery tutorials and we try and get together every Friday night right around this time um, and tonight I'm excited we're going to be doing something new we're going to do an embroidered hooded towel and I'm going to show you how to put the towel together and everything and to embroider it is really easy so I hope everybody's having a good evening oh let me uh let me post in the group right now that we are live so if you have not already joined um, I have a Facebook group um, called Carly Bell beginner machine embroidery and silhouette craft group and I think I put a link in the description box below um, if you would like to join we talk about everything in there, a bunch of troubleshooting. So whenever you're having issues with something, we're all there to help you and walk you through it. And everybody always has really good questions that help a lot of other people. So hi, Monica. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Star and Brenda. How y'all all doing tonight? So let's see. All right, I posted in the group. What else am I supposed to do? I want to pull it up on my computer so I can see. So, I am so happy it's Friday. This was... Weekly wait, I've got to turn the volume off. <laughs> um, this was my kids with everything that's been going on. Um, this was a first full normal week for us, for school and work and no hurricanes and no going out of town for anything. <laughs> so I am very much ready for Friday and to be here right now with y'all because <laughs> it was a long week. <laughs> so hi, Sheila. Hi, Delia and Kimberly and Lori. And it's Beezy Vegas. Hi, I hope everybody's doing good. Hi, Eartha from Port Allen. Ooh, sipping on your hot gumbo, girl. I want some of that gumbo. I'm ready. I'm ready for it to cool down. I went to Tennessee last weekend and it was so nice to not be sweating when you immediately when you walk out the door. <laughs> so I'm ready for gumbo weather. Very much ready. So, okay, let me tell y'all what we're doing this evening. Um, a hooded towel by popular request last week when we talked about what we're going to do. Um, so I went in my girl's bathroom now. Excuse these because they are old. But... I made some of the, one of the first things, not one of the first things, but after embroidering for a while, I made, I'm just ringing, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, sorry if it froze on y'all. So one of the things that I made when I, I didn't have my embroidery machine that long was some hooded towels for Abigail when she was little. So I think these towels are about five to six years old. <laughs> So they're a little raggedy looking, but I just wanted to show y'all what they look like. So I made two of them for Abigail. One had just her monogram on it. And this one is an applique. And you can see that the chevron fabric has really faded um, and it's wrinkly um, with some hearts. And this was from so, some sort of monogram pack I bought when I first started. I don't remember where it was from. But one of the things I want to try and troubleshoot tonight is you see how wrinkly this is? I think this was before I knew about um, heat and bond. So now I recommend everyone to use heat and bond light on the back of their applique fabric, um, especially for shirts. But I think it would also work good for towels. But we're going to try something new tonight. Someone recommended in the group that they saw somewhere else. Um, is to use some sort of interfacing behind the applique fabric um, so that it stands out a little bit more 
and prevents wrinkling. So I just so happened to buy this a week or two ago. This is some fleece interfacing. Um, so it's not super thick, but I think it's thick enough to put behind the applique fabric. Um, so we're gonna try that out tonight and see, it'll be an experiment for us to see how it works. Okay. Oh, thank you, Carol. Hi, Stacy from Shreveport. Um, okay, Sheila said she just bought a PE 800 and is hoping to learn to start embroidering this weekend. Yes, we are here for you. I'm so excited you got a machine. Um, hi, Marie. Hi, Terry. Hi, PJ and C from St. Augustine. Hi, Kimberly. So yeah, the, the towels are cute. They're old, but they're still cute. And the girls still use them. They're, Abigail's a little bit too big for them now, but now Elise, Elise uses them even though they don't have her name on them. <laughs> so I probably should be making her a hooded towel. But um, hi, Cynthia. Okay, Delia wants to know, have I ever done a bunting banner? I did do a really simple banner um, for So Fancy. And I think it's on their YouTube channel, but all it is is made out of felt. So I um, took pieces of regular crafting felt. I cut them out with the silhouette machined and like a, um, the bunting shape. Um, and then I embroidered on top of the felt and then I turned that into a banner. But I've seen, I was actually looking today, uh, Parker on the Porch. That's the website that we did the... Um, the key fobs from last time these guys and I made another one since then but um Parker on the porch they have some cute bunting designs that I think would be fun to try they had a really cute um hocus pocus one because I love hocus pocus so um but I think they're relatively simple in the hoop kind of the same um I'm not sure if you see the back on the banners if it might I, I wouldn't think it matters so I think it would just be like an in the hoop type thing. All right, let me look and see. Um, BZ says, I'm so glad you're doing this tutorial right now because I've been wanting to do a hooded towel for my daughter. She just turned one on the 16th. Oh, happy birthday to it's BZ Vegas's daughter. Um, Rosa Elena said embroidery library has some lace ones for embroidery also. Some, um, is it lace banner she's talking about? I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, so today we're gonna do the hooded towel. It's really easy. You will, I will be using my sewing machine and I'm also gonna use my serger. You don't have to have a serger to do this project, but it does give you a nicer finished towel um, because you'll see. So here's a towel. Um, and this was done with the serger. So we're gonna do this so that it doesn't fray as much. Um, but you can also do this with your sewing machine. You could do a zigzag stitch um, to try and close the edges of the, the towel. If not, it's just gonna fray and it's on the inside and it doesn't matter. Um, and then I also serge the bottom of this because this is going to be a raw edge we're going to cut a towel in half and then I use my sewing machine just to do a stitch across the back so it's all pretty straightforward but you will need a sewing machine along with your embroidery machine to do this project um, so these are Abigail's old towels so if you have seen my how to embroider a baby onesie video that I have on YouTube. Um, I made a cute onesie with a cute little Cafe du Mont um, design on it. Well, that onesie was for our friend and I was supposed to mail that onesie like in March. Never did. <laughs> my, it's, I bl I'm blaming my husband on this one because he, the baby was also getting christened and, and Chris wanted to get the baby a christening present and put it all in the mail together. 
well, he never got the baby a christening present, so the onesie and all the rest of the little things have been sitting on the side. So now the onesie is too small for the baby. Now the baby is getting a hooded towel <laughs> to replace the onesie that doesn't fit him anymore. <laughs> so that's where we're at. That's who we're making this hooded towel for tonight. So this is for a little boy. And I got these towels from Walmart. Um, hi, Sherry. How are you? Wait, let me look up. Uh, hi, Karen. Okay, so hooded towel. I got inexpensive towels from Walmart. You can get towels from anywhere. Um, so we have one regular bath towel. And then I have what I call a hand towel, the kind that you would dry your hands off with. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this in half like this. And that's what we're going to use for our hooded towel. I've debated on cutting it this way too. I, I looked at my old ones and it looks like I cut them this way. But I'll have to look and see because I kind of don't want it to look. Oh, that's going to get cut off anyway. Yeah, we're going to cut it this way. So long ways like that. So let's, so let me show you the design. So we need that. I got one piece of applique and this is the fabric I picked. I think it's gonna look good. So the bottom of the towel will be blue, the hood will be white, and then this applique fabric will be on it. And then I was playing around with threads and I only need three. I've realized I don't have a good selection of blues. I have some bright blues. I don't have a good selection of light blues. So I don't really have a baby blue to match. I have this, but I find it's a little bit too light. This is like an ice blue. And then the next closest one is this one. It's kind of a bluishy purple. So I might ask y'all opinion on which one y'all think would look better for. This is going to be a satin stitch of a letter, an applique um, alphabet. And then the other wording, I'm going to have some words in a dark gray and then his name in the navy blue. So, okay, y'all like this one better? So like those three colors together? I think that looks better too. Okay, so let me show you the design so you get what I'm talking about. But yeah, I need like, if you look at my blues, I don't have, I got the mint greens and then I got like the sky blues and the royal blue. I need more blues. I think I'll be making a thread purchase soon. <laughs> I need more variety. Okay, so let me get on in brilliance. Okay, so I made the design with in brilliance. Can you see? So his name is Jude, and I got this applique alphabet. This is from Creative Applique, and it's called Farmhouse Lemonade Applique. It's a really cute font set. They have it as a regular font and then they have it as an applique font. So this is in a satin stitch and you can see it has this um, bean stitch going through the satin, which I thought was cute. Then is for is, I think it's Davidson font and that's from applique corner. And then Jude is a new font that creative applique came out with today. Well, I just saw it today. Um, it's called Balloon, I think. And I put links for them all below. Um, and I want to say the Balloon one, if you spend $10 at Creative Applique, you get that font for free. So that's what I did. <laughs> Spent more than $10, of course. Uh, but um, that I thought that was a good deal. And then everything on the site's like 30% off on top of that. Um, so that's where everything's from. Pretty sure I put the links down below. Sorry if it's all jumbly. Uh, when I do it from my phone, it won't put the spaces in between things, but I'll go back and fix it once the video is over. So this this is what we're doing. So I think, so I'm gonna fill the J with that seersucker material and then do those colors I showed you. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, I need to cut the towel. Let me see, oops. I'm sorry, I'm just reading everything y'all are saying. Karen says, you know, we always have every color we need. Uh, 
but what we need. Right, right. Okay. All right. So, um, I need get this out the way. So I'm going to cut this with my ruler and my rotary blade. And then, I don't know if I showed y'all this, but I made another key fob um, last week after uh, we did Elise's. So I made this one for Abigail and her best friend was sleeping over and they wanted to do a craft project. So we made BFF keychains for them. Wait. Oh, the, you just made a baby shark towel. I thought about making a baby shark towel for tonight. I did see one that I liked. Um, but then I decided on something a little simpler because he's only like nine months, I think, the baby. Um, okay, let's see. Wait, I'm reading. Um, hi, Laura Lace's Fabrics. All right, Jenny says, what do you use to cut faux leather? Um, for the, for this project, the, you know, these are types of faux leather, um, the embroidery machine stitches the outline and I just cut around it with scissors. Um, I believe there's also a setting on the silhouette machine that we can cut, cut it with that too. Oh, hi, Jennifer Lopez. Hey, JLo, how you doing? <laughs> All right, oh, what did I do? I hit something, okay. Monica, I didn't realize that you can make a hooded towel by cutting the hand towel in half. The one I made, you use the whole hand towel. This is the way I learned how to do it. I'm sure there are many other ways to do it. But yeah, this this is how I learned is cutting this towel in half. And then I will save the other half for another hooded towel another day. Okay. Um, how do you download fonts into In Brilliance? Laura, remind me to show you when we go back to the computer after we're done, I will show you how to do it. I also have um, a video in the Facebook group how to do it. And I've been working on the Facebook group. We'll talk about that too after the project. I've been working on organizing the Facebook group better so that people can find resources easier and uh, frequently ask questions. Um, it's something called the unit section. Didn't know existed until a few days ago. Miss Carol in the group told me about how she was in another crafting group for her scan and cut and how the lady had it all organized really awesome so she showed me and I was like that's a great idea so we're working on that to get the group um, a little more organized and be able to access the information easier all right Mary says I've been practicing using the 5 by 12 hoop ever since watching your video ah. okay um I made a cover for the box the hoop came in with my name on it awesome Good job, Mary. Okay, let me cut this real quick. All right, get the fobs out the way. All right, so I am, probably the easiest thing to do with this would be just to fold it in half and run the scissors <laughs> through it. But I'll, I'll do my, um, I think since I have it. Okay, so my hand towel is 15 inches. So I'm going to cut at seven and a half. If I did my math correctly. And you could kind of see the line on the towel too where I'm um, turning y'all down. Um, where the, the, the fold is of the towel, but it doesn't have to be perfect. The only thing with cutting towels on this cutting mat is little pieces of towel stay in it after. But I just flipped, and this blade is not very sharp. I'm bad about cutting my vinyl, my heat transfer vinyl. I use this to cut that too. I need a rotary blade just for cutting fabric. I was good and got a pair of scissors just for cutting fabric. But now I need to do that. But yes, yeah, see, I don't know if you could see all the little pieces of the fuzz from the towel. It stays. But I just flipped. I've been having this mat for years. And this side of it was get, looking rough. And I flipped it over and now it's like I got a new mat. It's awesome. Okay. Okay, 
So half the towel. I find these particular hand towels are longer and narrower, na more narrow than some of the other ones I've bought in the past. So maybe that's why it looks a little funny. Um, but now this is also super easy to hoop because we are just going to hoop it. Okay, let's see, did I miss anything? Monica, Carol, I would like to join the Scan and Cut group if you would send me the link. I don't know if Miss Carol's here is if Miss Carol's here yet, Mary. But um, if you send me a message on Facebook, I can send it to you. Um, Sheila says I downloaded in Brilliance, but not sure how to use the program. I just retired and don't know anything about these programs. It does. It is a little bit of a learning curve, but. Um, I am hoping to put together a series of tutorials in that unit section of Facebook. So it's like super easy, to, like how to install BX fonts, how to merge designs, how to do that, you know, and have like individual little topics. So they're really easy to find. Um, thank you, Hillary. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yes, Mary. So I have one video on YouTube on how to use in brilliance with the 5 by 12 hoop. I go through all the steps on there. Um, I did do a Facebook, I mean, um, a YouTube live on brilliance where I kind of just skimmed through the program and told you some general things. You could watch that too. That would help. Um, there's a way to condition those mats. You wash them in the bathtub. Okay. I'll have to look into that. Um, all right, Susie. So yeah, y'all message me on Facebook um, at my Carly Bell page and ask me for the Scan and Cut Facebook group and I will send it to you. But Miss Carol loves this lady. She says she's super helpful and very detail oriented and explaining the, the software for the Scan and Cut. Okay, do I wash my blanks before working on them? Usually not, no. <laughs> the one blank I have learned that I do need to wash beforehand is those waffle weave dish towels. They really, really, really shrink in the washing machine, but shirts and uh, towels and other things, no, I don't wash them. <laughs> Hi, Susie, I'm glad uh, you joined us tonight. Okay, so I have my half of towel. So now we're gonna figure out, you know, very easily that we're gonna put the design in the middle of the hoop. Um, so one time I did this, I put y'all in my hoop on my pegboard to hold my little tripod. Let's see if that works again. I'm trying not to have a disaster like I did in my first YouTube live where, uh, we've knocked over the tripod like 15 times. <laughs> okay. How does that look? Y'all can see kind of face down a little bit, move more this way. All right, so I got my towel and I'm using a five by seven hoop, but I didn't make the design where it really fills up the whole thing. Cause I was like, I was looking at my old towels and they didn't, they didn't fill up the whole thing, but they were bigger than a four by four, but you could also use a four by four, um, hoop if that's, um, if you have a smaller machine, you could definitely do a four by four but I wanted it to be slightly bigger, but not this big. So, uh, let me mark my center first. Let me give a tape measure, just to make sure I'm in the middle. Okay, so my towel is about 24 and a half, around 12 and a quarter here. Am I measuring that good? You could kind of see where the the line is on the fold. <laughs> but um okay, also this is gonna be the finished seam. That's gonna be the front of your hood. So we wanna keep that edge. 
So this is going to be the bottom of the hood. So my design is going to be going this way. I have it looking at it upside down right now. But that we're just doing placement marks, so it's okay. So I'm going to use my disappearing ink fabric marker and make some marks. And then depending on what kind of design you're doing, like some people like to do those um, peaker designs. And if that's the case, you want this line to maybe be as close to this line as possible. So, and then you would move your design to where it's all the way on that line. So then it looks, you know, like the peaker, it really starts all the way at the the bottom of the of the towel so when it's on the kid's head it looks cute and it's all the way at the bottom so for mine I might move it down a little bit now that I'm saying that because if this is going to be the point I'm like looking at this one you don't want the design to be too close to the point there if you could see what I'm talking about so I think I am going to move it down a little so I'll draw some new marks and then use that for my crosshairs. Okay, so that's my crosshairs. So now I need to hoop. So five by seven hoop. And we're gonna float it. And floating means we are only gonna hoop the stabilizer. Um, so I'm cutting, I need to buy more throw away. I'm running low. No. Uh, so tear away is a thin stabilizer that you can actually remove and tear away when you're done. And so you could see like on the back of this, I removed all the stabilizer so you can't, you can't see it um, on the back. And that, this is a good stabilizer for towels. Um, I would use different things for shirts. All right, so we're just hooping the stabilizer. I'm gonna make sure, my hoop is very dirty, but there is a little tiny arrow there and there's a little tiny arrow at the top of here, and that's how I know I'm not, I don't have my hoop upside down. You wanna make sure it's in the right orientation for my, new, my newbies. Okay, and then you just push it down and then tighten the screw at the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna use my grid again. And your grid, you know, your grid's in the right orientation when the little circle is on the top right and you're reading your ABC, you know, and it's not backwards. And it will fit in your, the little tabs in your hoop correctly, if you know your hoop's in right. But those, ti those tiny little things can mess up your placement if you don't have those um, in the right orientation. So I am just doing my placement dots. I have a smaller ruler to draw my crosshairs. Okay, so now we need to make this sticky so that we can lay our towel on top of it and it's gonna stick to it. See, this would not be something you could hoop because when you hoop something, it really needs to be bigger than the hoop or the tension won't be right. It won't, it won't be pulling it um, right. It'd only be pulling it this way. It wouldn't be pulling it also this way. Um, also, it's just this is thicker and it's harder to push the hoop down when it's a thicker item. So I'm going to make this sticky by spraying some temporary spray adhesive on it. And try not to get my spray adhesive everywhere. So I put my hoop in a grocery bag. I went to the dollar store this week and I totally forgot to look for that thing. Oh, I just remembered. Somebody a while back posted a hack where if you go to the Dollar Tree and buy a steering wheel cover, it's just like a, it's like a fake leather steering wheel cover. You could put that around your hoop when you spray and then you wouldn't get all the gunk and nasty stuff like I got on mine. And I just remembered we went there, the, we went on Monday because 
Abigail needed a poster board and I totally forgot to look for that steering wheel cover. Hmm. Okay, so probably didn't need to spray it that much. The towel's not even touching the top. All right, so, and sorry if it's hard to see, my placement lines are already starting to disappear. Um, but I can still see them. So now I'm gonna use the placement marks on my towel and line and lay them directly on top of my placement marks on my hoop. And I usually take my fingers and put them right over the wide, the wide dots. And so that I touch, no, I'm wrong way. And then let me think about this. It doesn't matter. Okay. So this is the brackets. This is the points. And then I just want to make sure I did not do a good job. Uh, this line is lining up nicely here. And this line lines up nicely here. And if you don't get it dead on, but you know what's on your towel is where you want your design. So say when you put this on the machine, and this is my center point, but when I put it on my machine, my needle is here, just a little smidge up. You can move your needle to where it's in the center point that you want, and I'll show you that in a minute. But try to get it as close as you can. Mainly you don't want it to be crooked. I still have it, like my line is straight here, I think, even if it's, uh, you know, a smidge down or a smidge up. As long as it's straight is what's important. But I try to get it on there right. And then once it's there, just press it down. And then because this is a towel and it's it's got pile, I guess you would say, um, and fluffy, the threads will easily get lost and, and go down um, into the the fluff of the towel. So what we do to fix that is use water soluble topper. Uh, you'll see in the Facebook group we abbreviate it as WSS for water soluble stabilizer. Um, so I'm just going to cut a piece that is as big as my sewing field and um, I'm going to pin it. Some people spray the water, the, the adhesive, um, but I don't like to make the top of the towel sticky, so I'm just gonna pin it down. Sorry, and I'm a little tedious. I don't like those pins. <laughs> I'm a little tedious when I do this because I like my topper to be nice and flat. It doesn't need to be. I'm just being a little extra. All right. So like I like to pull it and make it nice and flat. And then you want to make sure that your embroidery needle is not going to hit these so make sure they're really out of this the way where your design is going to be i try to get it outside of the sewing field as much as possible okay so we are ready to go to the machine now so let me take this off my little contraption so you see i had it hanging <laughs> the tripod hanging from my hoop <laughs> okay so what do we need now oh miss carol's here how you doing, Miss Carol? Glad you could join us. Uh, let me get this right. Okay. So, okay, let me look back and see what I missed. Because I can't look at my phone while it's pointing down on the table. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Okay, Monica said you, you bought the steering wheel cover. We went on Monday too. I can't believe I totally forgot about it. We only stayed on the side of the store that had the Halloween stuff because that's the only place the kids wanted to be. 
Um, okay, BZ said she used paper bags or the box pieces that come out of the folded sheets. Okay. I need to clean my hoops. Yeah, rubbing alcohol, um, acetone, um, uh, just on. I let them soak in hot soapy water. Um, oh, did Luke call Carol? How's Luke doing? Um, I've seen people use painter's tape too, like the oh, my masking tape that I, you know, I love my masking tape. They'll line the masking tape. It's just, I'm in a rush. I'm ready to, to you know, start stitching so I don't worry about it too much. At least, at least I put it in the grocery bag. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, yes, Miss Carol. Everybody wants to know about the scan and cut group now. I told them about it. Um. But yeah, so you y'all can message me or Miss Carol on Facebook. I was telling them about the units that we're trying to do in our Facebook group, and I learned it from you and your scan and cut group on how nice and organized it is. So they want they want to know about it. Okay, turning my machine on, and I need my USB stick. It's in my persona. Okay, so I'm going to. Save my um, embroidery file I made on my USB stick. J is for Jude. Save. And then eject. USB. Pretty please. Thank you this. Okay. All right. And I have a feeling my bobbin is going to run out during this process. So then y'all will get to see me change bobbin in between a project. Some people like will look at the bobbin and be like, I don't want to deal with it. If it froze. Um, sorry about that. So uh, some people will look at their bobbin. If they see it's low, they'll change it. I am cheap. And I'm going to use that bobbin until it runs out. And I will back up stitches and I will use a new one. I'll, then I'll put a new one in. So <laughs> um, that is up to you if you want to like me or not. I haven't had any trouble with it. So, okay. I am putting my hoop on the machine. And so remember we said this is the bottom of the hood. So for me... I have to, when I load my design, oh, I gotta put this in. Okay, close. Let's do it again. So I'm going to pick my design. J is for Jude. Okay. On my older machine, it's going ahead and showing the first step. But the PE 800 is gonna give you a nice little preview screen and it's gonna show you which way the design is turned, if it's turned any kind of way. Mine, I have to go and press some buttons to find it. So I went to adjust layout. So you see it's just up and down, but I need it turned this way. So I'm gonna go to rotate and I wanna turn it 90 degrees that way. And it's thinking. Okay, so now it's turned the direction I want it to be. So the J will go like this, and then the name will be here. And this is the bottom of the hood. So now that we have that, um, we need to we need thread. I don't even have any thread loaded. Okay, we said. These are our thread colors, and can okay, we go back, back, okay, so it's going to be doing the J, and I'm going to end up doing the J in this color, so I'm going to go ahead and do the placement and tack down stitch with this. So if you've never done an applique before, uh, and by the way, I use a thread stand, highly recommend 
using a thread stand. I do not like putting my thread here. I find things happen and mess up the tension. So I like how this feeds into the machine better. So I'm threading the machine, just following the numbers. Um, okay, so if you've never done an applique before, um, it's gonna do a placement stitch and show you where to put your fabric. Then it does a tack down stitch and that's gonna actually sew your fabric to the towel. Then we'll trim the applique fabric away and then we'll do the satin finish stitch which will cover up the raw edges of the applique. Okay, I'm reading things. Um, Carol wants to say, Carly, how long have you been using your PE7, 770? Because folks are wondering earlier about how durable these machines are. Yeah, so my machine is seven years old. I started, I think I bought it when Abigail was one. Um, and it still runs great. Now I don't make stuff on it every day, but I used to um, when she was little. I, because you know, when I first started with this, she was little and I would go and I would put her to bed and then I would come in here and I would stay in here till midnight and I made something every night. And it, it, as soon as I told people that I was doing embroidery, then everybody wanted something. So then I was making something every night of the week. And then Elise was born and then that all went downhill because I was exhausted. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, these machines are troopers. Um, I know people that have embroidery businesses that have two and three of these running at the same time. And then eventually, and then they might get a multi-needle, but they'll still keep these running because they work well, especially for smaller projects. Um, like a towel like this where you don't have to watch very closely for things to get caught up underneath the hoop and mess up. So, but yeah, I definitely, I highly recommend these machines. Um, where is our mascot Elise? Elise is in her bed watching my iPad and I would not be surprised if she is sleeping because she was like looking like this when I went and checked on her before I started this video. <laughs> Um, all right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So, is that a good view for y'all? Okay, so my thread is loaded. My J, I'm going to put my presser foot down and it's going to start stitching the J. Okay, oh, here Elise. Speak of the mascot. Did you put pants on? Okay. <laughs> I think... And I got a cute little bow on. Oh, good. Can I say hi? Hi, hi, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> that's how many people you have. Three. It says 78. Ooh, that's a lot. So, um. <laughs> Can you tell me all their names? I can't tell you all their names, but there's Miss Brenya and Miss Delia and Miss Rosa Al Wait, Elena so and Miss Sheila and Miss Carol. Miss Carol said, Spike, strike a dance pose. Oh, look, and we did makeup too, guys. Show me makeup. Close your eyes. <laughs> she was with me in the bathroom when I was putting makeup on, and she's like, I need makeup too, mommy. What happened to your ponytail? I took it out. You took it out? <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, well, let, my, let mommy show people. Oh, Aww. hey, do your job. What's your job? Hey, what's your job? Tell everybody, give this video a thumbs up and click the bell <laughs> to subscribe. She's a much better YouTuber than I am. <laughs> because that's why I watch a lot of YouTube. I know, you're so good. So I learned how to be a YouTube subscriber. A YouTube subscriber. <laughs> I love this show. Okay, go watch a video where mommy makes her her towel, okay? Okay. Okay, good you girl. You can do it every day. Okay, baby. And do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so here's my J. 
So now we're gonna go over, back over here. Oh, I need to turn my iron off. And we're gonna cut our applique fabric. I do, I do I need the iron? Yeah, I need the iron. I'm just gonna plug in my mini ones. Okay, so we're gonna try something new. So normally for, um, yeah, so we have Aunt Carol and Nana Brenda and all of them. Yep, she's gonna know all of y'all. <laughs> and Aunt Con. I think Aunt Con couldn't make it this evening. I think she had something going on. Um, okay, so normally with an applique, I would iron heat and bond light on the back of the applique fabric. This will help once you're done this kind of fuses the back of the applique fabric to the material. And on a shirt, this works really well. So that after you wash it, it doesn't bubble up and wrinkle and stuff like this one is, right? But because this is a fluffy towel, I don't know how well the heat and bond will work. So we're gonna try using some fluffy interfacing. So I have this, this is fusible fleece. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fuse my applique fabric to this instead and even though this side won't fuse to the towel it's going to cause that applique fabric to kind of puff up a little nicer and not wrinkle i think we'll see how it goes so we'll make it and then i'll wash it and then next week i will update y'all on how it looks and then i'm going to mail it before the baby is a teenager and he won't want a hood and towel anymore <laughs> okay um, okay, C says one-sided fusible flex. Okay. All right, so what am I doing? I am cutting this. So, um, this is the material. So I am, somebody else asks in the group too, like how much material do you buy? See this long strip? This is a quarter yard. Whenever I go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's um, and I see a piece of fabric that I would like for applique work, all I buy is a quarter yard. And you see, I've had this for years and I just trim the piece that I need and then I go. Now, if you are a shop and you're selling the same thing over and over again with the same fabric, you of course wanna do something different. But for me as a hobby person, this works out great for me. So all I'm gonna do is cut a piece that is just a little bit bigger than my placement stitch. Okay, so then I'm gonna cut this off. Okay, so this piece here is a little bit bigger than my J. I wonder if I should have did it this way instead. What do y'all think? Cause like, if I do it this way, you're barely seeing any of the lines because the, at the, the letter itself is thin. You see what I'm talking about? But if I do it this way, then it'll be stripey down the whole way. What do y'all think? Turn it, yeah, that's what I think too. Okay, I'll save this piece for another project. Cause applique is always like just little tiny, you'd be surprised what I save little pieces of things and you'd be surprised how much I use them. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it this way. So I see how wide of a piece I need and I see how tall of a piece I need. And then I just cut where I made those marks. Okay, so yeah, let's do it this way. So now the stripes will go this way. And now we're gonna try this. So I bought this from Walmart. This is fusible fleece from Pellon. Can you see that? I've never used it before. So this will be a first for me, <laughs> but I bought it for, so last week we did the Parker on the porch and they have a lot of cute zippered bags. And I read somewhere that this works great for interfacing on the, on the zippered bags um, 
when you're using a material, a plain, you know, material and not vinyl to make the, um, the zippered bags. So I'm gonna cut this to be just a smidge smaller than my applique fabric. And I do, this is the same thing I do with the heat and bond light. Um, when I cut a piece of heat and bond light for um, the back of applique fabric, I do the same thing. I cut just a piece a little bit smaller and then I iron it. So this is a side that's fusible. So I think I'm going to, this is just a piece of parchment paper. And I'm just going to iron my fabric to it. So I think that will work. Let's see. Yep, and it's stuck to there. So now it's like a fluffy piece of applique fabric. So I think it's going to, and then when we sew it down, it's going to puff up nicely and be smooth when we stitch it. So let's try that. So now we'll go back to the machine and then all the rest is just stitching. So, and then I think I will also, just to make sure that this doesn't move. Okay, make sure your hoops on there good and when you lift it, sorry, y'all can't even see what I'm doing. Hello, okay. Make sure when you lift your hoop, it doesn't pop off. It's, it, that means it's it's on there correctly because this bracket is finicky sometimes. So I'm gonna go spray the back of this with some temporary spray adhesive real quick so that I make sure when I put it on there, it doesn't move around before it starts. Um, Okay, so I just sprayed some of the temporary spray adhesive on here. So now I'm going to put it directly over my J. Make sure it covers all that placement stitch. And then I'm just gonna push it down. So then it just, it won't move when the machine moves. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm re, okay, let's go ahead and stitch. We're leaving the same thread. Now this is the tack down stitch. So go ahead. All right, now I'm gonna look at questions. All right. Oh, I'm reading what y'all are talking about fabric. <laughs> uh, Carol said, how much was the bolt? Wait, tell, let me grab my wallet. It's creeping toward the door. <laughs> Carol, you just like me, we easily easily talked into buying things okay so this I actually got lucky because I was at Walmart and you know at Walmart there's never anybody in the fabric section to actually cut fabric for you so but they do have nice little fat quarters now at Walmart and they have two yard and five yard maybe let's see what I bought uh, this was my Walmart thing what did I get I got four yards of black fabric so this is hard to find right now. So when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. I got two yards of white fabric, and this is just plain old. Oh, this is, it's not 100% cotton though. It says 65% polyester. But I would think of this as being quilted cotton. I use this to line the inside of my masks. So that's why I got that. And then Elise picked out this fabric for Ladybug, because she loves it's a TV show on Disney um, called The Miraculous. No, it's called Miraculous. And the little superhero girl is the Miraculous Ladybug. So she's obsessed with this. So she's like, I need red fabric, with black polka dots. Couldn't be black fabric with red polka dots. And she was very specific. <laughs> and so when we found it, I was so excited. And then I got this because I thought it was super cute for the holidays. So I'm going to make something with it. But it's just one. Oh, and this one's 100% cotton. I don't know what this one is. 100% cotton, fat quarter. So it was just Mommy, these big ones that were poly poly polyester. What you have to make for me? What you want me to make for you? Some apple juice. Apple, you gotta go ask daddy for apple juice. I, I got my grape juice. Oh, that's not it either. 
Okay, so I went off on a tangent. Oh, right. So while I was in the fabric department, I was looking, I saw this and I'm like, oh, this might work for those bags, the zippered bags. And so I went and held it up to the fabric table at Walmart and I looked and I opened it and it was one yard. So I just, ah, I took this to the checkout counter and I told them it's one yard. You can measure it. <laughs> and I just, they just scanned this and said one yard and it was, it was done. So it was $5, Carol. Your wallet will not be mad at you. It was $5 and like five and change, I think for one yard, but that's what I got. But it's not a real, you know, it's not a full bolt. It's only one yard. Okay. That was my tangent. Okay. Now I'm taking this off the hoop and it's not super puffy, but that's because, sorry, um, this applique font is not real wide and big. If you would pick a really wide and big applique font, then this might look a little puffier, but you can see it does like poke out a little bit. So I don't think we'll have any wrinkling issues with this after um, it washes. So these are my favorite applique scissors. And if you're new here, I should have links for everything I use in the description box below. If you click where is it at? Like the see more button or like the little arrow pointing down underneath my um, my name where it says Carly Bell um, in my little round picture. Um, it should show you everything. But it's kind of a jumbled mess right now. But after this video is over, I will fix it and make it look a little more presentable. But now I am just cutting. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I am holding this up and I'm cutting this as close to that stitch as I can without um, cutting the, the tack down stitch. If you did cut the tack down stitch, it's not the end of the world because that um, satin stitch that's going to come in after is going to hold the fabric, you know, back down. This is not cutting too good because I put, maybe I, I went a little too trigger happy with that spray adhesive <laughs> to put this in place. <laughs> and it's cutting through the, the fleece as well as the applique fabric. But I'm making sure I'm not cutting my towel. I'm not digging my, my scissors in. I'm staying on top of my towel. I'm staying on top of my water soluble topper. But you want to get close to this tack down stitch because the satin stitch is going to go and it's going to cover a little bit of the inside and then it's going to cover a little bit of the outside. So it's going to cover up this raw edge. Um, but if you don't cut it close enough to this, some of that raw edge still might be sticking out after you're done with your satin stitch. Elise, what are we watching tonight? Is it Phineas and Ferb? No. You should sing everybody your Phineas and Ferb song. No. I think you should. I got a good video of her um, in the car the other day singing. <laughs> She's got a good little singing voice too. Okay, sorry I'm being slow at this. It's not as... It's not cutting like butter like it usually does. And these are my new scissors. So they're a little sharper. But this is a little more hard to cut because of the fleece, I think. And I put too much sticky on it. <laughs> okay, let me look up here so I can see what y'all are talking about while I'm doing this. Are y'all talking about the iron? Yes, my, that is my favorite little iron. And yes, it is. If you could find it at Walmart, it's like a lot cheaper than it is on Amazon. 
I went to Walmart and looked for it and I couldn't find it. But I've heard other people did. Okay, this is sticky. <laughs> okay. Um Right, okay, it's BZ Vega says it's that's tear away that's in the hoop, correct? Then I floated floated the towel. Then I pinned the water soluble topper. Then I ironed the fleece on the back of the applique fabric. And then I just did the the stitches for the the tack down. So yes, you got all of that order correct. Sorry, I'm being so slow. This is sticky. Okay, maybe don't do like me and don't spray the, the adhesive on the back of the fleece. I just had bad luck recently with, um, like I put an applique piece down and then I changed steps on the machine and then the needle didn't like start stitching right where it was. It like moved completely on the other side of the hoop and then the applique piece moved and so I've been spraying it to make sure it stays in place. But I probably did not need to do that this time. It's like stuck to the topper. <laughs> well, that's all gonna, the, the good thing is that it is stuck to the topper and that topper is gonna come off when we're done and it'll pull all that stickiness off with it. It's like all of this is super sticky. But I want to leave the, the I don't want to cut the topper away because I want to make sure my satin stitches on the other side of the, on the outside of the J don't sink down into the towel too much. So I got my applique fabric up, but they got some fleece that is still stuck to the top of this. that that was a bad idea don't do like me okay but all of that's gonna get pulled up when I'm done because we're gonna pull all this water soluble topper up like tear away okay so that's my J sorry that took forever okay so the J is there so now all we have left is stitching so hopefully it won't take that long and then I could show you the super easy way to put the towel together. Okay. So I'm just going to put y'all on me now because I'm just going to hit play. So now it's going to, got everything there. My hoop is on good. Nothing's in the way. I see my step is the satin stitch for the J. So I'm going to hit start. I like how it pops up a little bit. light is too bright but it does like a zigzag st stitch around the whole thing and then it will do it'll go back and do the side stitch so that's going to take a little a little time so let me go back and look at the questions while we're doing that geez i got 94 people in here hi everybody Wait, I'm looking at a comic. Carol, you're such a good assistant. <laughs> okay, let me back up a lot here. Um, oh, goodness, I missed a lot. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, back to the how much was the bolt question. <laughs> okay. Yes, the little iron is 
from Walmart. It's my favorite. Now, now, okay. Uh, Christina says, now I need to buy fusible fleece because that puffy fabric is cute. Yes. Um, yes, Amazon has the iron too. I think at Walmart the iron is like $13 and Amazon the iron is 17 18 sometimes 19 so it's just a little bit more. It's not too much. All right. What, baby? Did you know Ferb has a, has a crush on Vanessa? No, I didn't know that. He did. <laughs> yeah. Did Daddy make you some apple juice? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Christina said you can get the same iron at Hobby Lobby too and use the 40% off coupon. There we go. Um, for a small piece like that, can you use a glue stick to make it? That's a good idea, a glue stick. I could have done that. I don't know if it, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I don't know um, how that would have went on the fleece, maybe, but yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Rosa Elena says, I tell my husband, YouTube, um, X, X me buy it, probably made you buy it, yeah. Um, I love the pre-cut too, because no one there knows how to use a ruler and a scissors, that is right at Walmart, right? Um, oh, Susan bought the same stuff from Walmart too. Yeah, I'm glad they're finally getting fabric back. They did have a really nice selection of these um, fat quarters when we went. I had to reel it in because <laughs> I had like five and six of them. I'm like, okay, that's, that's enough. Um, oh, Sheila says you're an inspiration and I'm a newbie. I looked up all your videos. My cousin is expecting her first granddaughter soon, so I want to do something for the baby. Yeah, congrats. Um, for your cousin's first granddaughter. Um, yes, baby things are the reason why I bought an embroidery machine. I didn't, I never paid attention to this stuff before until I had a baby and I had my baby shower for Abigail and I got the cutest, you know, personalized baby gifts and I was, I was just like, wow. <laughs> got the cutest little bloomers with her name on the butt and blankets and little cuddlies with her name on it and I just I was fascinated and then I started noticing embroidery and I started noticing other people's you know like they had their bag with their monogram on it or they had towels at their house with it um, and you know and other little baby things it, it wasn't until then that I even noticed it and now and then I got obsessed and then I was like, I need to learn how to do this myself because I can't afford to keep buying all these things. So, they, yes, <laughs> baby things is how it starts <laughs> for me at least. So, but I, every baby shower that I go to or, you know, friends having babies, that's, this, this is my go-to. I make them a onesie, a bib, a burp cloth. Um, or a quilt or a blanket like I love Miss I got them up here on my shelf um, Miss Joni's um, the heirloom vintage looking quilts those are beautiful I need to actually need to embroider one of those this weekend for a friend um, but all those things are super easy to make onesies can be a pain in the butt because it's hard to keep all the fabric out the way and you'll see um, Sheila when you look I have a onesie video on YouTube and I use um, mask, masking tape is my best friend. <laughs> I use tape to hold the excess material out the way. But um, all those things are super fun and, and people love them as a gift. Love them, because I know I love them. And then when I give them as gifts, everybody loves them. So um, you're gonna be making all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, Carol says I have a silhouette too. Yes, that I use. I need to make a silhouette shirt um, this weekend. And if I'm not running around like a crazy lady, I might do, I don't know, YouTube live, maybe a Facebook live, um, showing you how I make a, um, a shirt with a silhouette machine with the heat transfer vinyl. Because I know I've been promising Miss Brenda that I'm going to do that. <laughs> Um, hi Jenny, let's see, oh, welcome Yolanda, I'm glad you finally made it to Alive, 
Did I leave? Okay, Cynthia said, did I leave the water soluble stabilizer on? Yes, it is still on right now. And so it, um, if you can see now, it's helping the threads look good um, for the side that's stitching into the towel so that it, um, it looks nice and even. Especially like if you could see the top of this J, you see that line is like nice. If you wouldn't have that and it would sink into the towel, that nice satin column would look like frayed on the edge, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, it, it helps keep it looking nice and crisp, I guess is a good word. Um, I'm sorry if I'm way off on the chat. I'm, I'm, I know I'm high up because I was looking back. Um, okay, let me scroll down some more. How do I think the fusible fleece would do on knit fabric? I think it would do okay. Um, the, I mean, the fuse, I mean, because definitely because it's fusible. Um, but do you mean on a knit shirt? I don't have a knit shirt on right now, but uh, a knit shirt using the same kind of quilting cotton fabric, I think it would work fine. And then if you wanted to use a knit material as your applique material, actually the fusible from the fleece would help keep the knit material nice um, and help stabilize it while it while you're embroidering on top of it. Um, you'll need to get a, a bigger craft room for all these people, yeah. <laughs> um... Oh, I'm sorry, Ebony. She said she just got her embroidery machine and she has to send it to get repaired. I'm sorry. Okay, my J just finished. So it looks good. If you notice, they got a couple little pieces here. This is something I love about in Brilliance. Whenever I save a design, it automatically removes hidden stitches. So if we go back to, where's in Brilliance? Here. Um, see how the J, the little J is on top of this one. It removed the satin stitches behind it so it wouldn't be so bulky when this navy blue J stitches on top of it. So that's something cool. Okay, so now I'm lifting. Let me show you this in case you haven't seen it before. I lift my presser foot. Where's my scissors? Here. I'm going to cut the thread here where it enters the thread path. And I'm gonna pull it out okay you don't want to pull your thread out the opposite direction of the thread path um, this will cause fuzz to build up in this area here which is going to cause issues and bird nesting and tension problems later always want to pull your thread out through the bottom okay so now I think I'm gonna do the dashed bean stitch um, that goes in the middle of the satin stitch, I'm going to do in the silver. And then the next word is for is going to also be in silver. So we only got three thread changes for this project, which is good. All right, so I'm going to hit down. And now it's going to start stitching this like bean stitch and it goes like right in the middle of the satin stitch it's just a nice little extra touch you could skip this step like if you like this font but you don't necessarily want to do this um in the bean stitch you don't have to you could skip it but i thought it was cute so i'm keeping it i oh, like my my bracelet elise gave me <laughs> every morning when she wakes up i say good morning sunshine so she got this little bracelet set from Claire's and I had a son. So she's like, mommy, this one's yours. She's so stinking cute. That's why she gets away with everything. Okay. Um, uh, okay, Susan says, I need a good size regular iron. I love my Auric iron over here. Um, I, a couple features I love about it. First off, it's like, 11 years old, works great. It comes with that stand 
and it will power off when it's not when it feels like it's not being used it will the heat will turn off because I am bad about leaving the iron on um, okay well, let me show you this so it finished the bean where are we where's my phone okay it finished the bean stitch so the next is the J is four and that's gonna be in the same color so I'm just gonna hit start again I think what's happening oh no it's putting Jude oh look at this see I don't know if you could see but it's doing Jude first and it had the is four after so I did not notice that I'm glad I was watching so I'm gonna hit cut Okay, and then I'm gonna hit adjust. Uh, you see this needle with the plus minus? That's to move around. So we're gonna, the spools jump around steps and the needle jumps around stitches. So I wanna jump ahead to the next step. So I'm gonna hit plus. So now it's on the is four. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit start. I was wondering why it was staying down there. Okay, so now it's gonna do the is four. So you definitely need to get comfortable with learning how to move around on your machine. Um, mine may look a little bit different than yours, but just figure out which buttons are to move ahead steps and to move ahead and behind individual stitches because that's going to come in real handy when things go wrong and you need to back up and you need to go over something again or like when I do have to change my bobbin, when my bobbin runs out, I'll stop it, I'll cut the thread, take the old bobbin out, put the new bobbin in, and then I back up. 10 or 20 stitches so that there's some overlap between the old and the new so that there's not a loose um, thread, um, under, if that makes sense, underneath. So, okay. Um, oh, we're talking about the iron. So the Orc iron, I found some, they don't make them anymore. I found them on eBay, but I did find a comparable iron. Oh, and also it's cordless. It can, um, you have the choice of keeping the cord on or moving like a little thing and the cord will come off um and it like holds a charge on it like uh you know chargeable battery um so panasonic makes one it, uh, it it seems like it's very very similar it comes with a nice um stand and it powers off and it's cordless so i think i've linked i don't know if i linked it here but i linked it i linked the mini iron down there I put the link for the Panasonic iron in the Facebook group in the supplies section I made in the, the units I was telling y'all about. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm so behind. Okay, Delia says, does HTV go bad? It can, over time. So, for example, I made a shirt for Abigail when she was four. Saints, so like uh, at their school on um, during the fall uh, and during football season, they can wear a football saint shirt um, on Mondays. And I had Abigail a cute little fleur de lis, and it said Hudat, and it had her last name on the back and the number four. So I've been having that shirt now. Elise is four and in pre-K and at the same school as Abigail. So she wore her saint shirt, and then she. Um, came home Monday evening and she peeled off the gold floor to leave. <laughs> and then I washed it and then I found little peelings of HTV. It was four years old, so it does go bad over time. <laughs> but it, I find, I mean, it lasted um, Abigail, you know, a full year of wearing it and, um, and then it sat up, so that probably it didn't help. Okay, now we did the is four and the silver. Okay, now, I am going to change the thread the last time. I'm going to cut it. I have to lift the presser foot for the thread to come through. It won't it won't go through if it's down. And then I'm going to load the navy. And we, it started stitching a little bit with that silver for Jude, but I think this will go right on top of it, so I'm not worried about it. Made that a little too long. I see it's 
see where it, I'm going to cut where it started there. Okay, so it says finish sewing because my steps weren't right. But now I'm just going to hit the plus spool button. And now it's on Jude. Now it's on his, the full name that goes at the bottom. So now I'm going to start that. Okay, so that's going. Well, Melissa said applique scares her. She bought a soccer ball and didn't realize it until she stitched it all out and she had a ball with no black circles. <laughs> applique is really easy. And once you get the hang of it, the only thing that can be tedious about applique, like if you're doing a design that has seven different pieces of applique fabric in it, then yeah, it gets kind of ugh. But um, it, it really is beautiful. And when you can start combining different beautiful fabrics together and you figure out what works or what's in your head or what you're thinking or you know even just copying a picture you saw online of the same design and it comes together it's really really pretty um but it, i mean it's got those three steps you got your placement step you tack down stitch you finish in put your heat and bond light on the back of your fabric and you're good to go and get these scissors you need these scissors <laughs> um okay Uh, off topic, but do any of you stitch your samples on felt squares? Um, I I don't stitch samples, but I, I understand people do. Um, I've seen some embroidery design websites where they'll show a sample of their design stitched on a felt square. I think it looks better to stitch it on white knit fabric, and you can buy white knit, knit fabric by the yard, so t-shirt material from Joann's and just cut you, you know, like a nine by nine um, inch square, stitch it on your, your five by seven hoop, and then when you're done, just fold in the raw edges and it makes it look like a folded shirt. I think that's prettier than stitching it on itself, personally. Um, I love the fusible fleece, use it a lot, but I also have quite a few different stabilizers and interfaces. I'm not, I'm not a sewer, so I'm not super familiar with interfacing. I know a lot about stabilizers, and I have all the different kinds of stabilizers, but interfacing I've not really touched on. Um, hi, Gail. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry if I'm way behind. Let's see. Do I sell my projects or is it a hobby only? I do sell some. So this is a gift. My neighbor just called me <laughs> today and was like, hey, can you embroider a name on a baby blanket that I could bring to a baby shower tomorrow morning. I'm like, sure. So after we're done with this, I'll be embroidering a name on a baby blanket for her. <laughs> so um, she'll give me some money for that. And like she gave me, she has some cups too. She wants me to put names on with stickers. So I have um, acquaintances, friends, and family, but I usually tell family, don't, I don't want you know, them to give me any of their money. But um, I do have people ask me to make things for them and I make them. Um, I don't have a shop. Um, but I, I do it because I enjoy it, um, but I don't feel like I have enough time to take, I used to when Abigail was little and before I had a lease where I took orders and I was making stuff every day, but, um, I don't feel like now I have the time with my girls being older and homework and dancing school and catechism and birthday parties and all the things like I'm, I'm busy all the time I enjoy doing this and this is my Friday night thing but I I wasn't in my craft room at all this week because we were just so busy with homework and my mom's birthday was this week so we went by her house um, after school one day but if you have a shop um, it, it can it's really it's really nice and fulfilling and, and you can a lot of good things and you can make some good money and like I paid off my machine the first few months I had it for making making things for other people. Okay. Uh, Mary said I used to own a Janome, sold it, and then thought I wasn't going to embroider anymore, then missed it and got the 770. So that's the same machine I have. Um and love it. It performs better, more better than the expensive Janome. Really? Okay. I have not played with the Janome before. I've heard mixed things about it, but we have some people in the group that have them and love them. They, I've heard that the interfacing is not as straightforward and easy to understand as the as the brother. Okay, so here we are. 
J is for do. So if you're new, these are called jump stitches. And I'm going to cut these with my scissors. Um, if you, this is a low end model, you would say, I would say. They have one model that's lower than this one. But so this is not the lowest, but it is on the low end of the embroidery machines that um, Brother offers. And this one Mommy. does not cut jump Mommy. stitches. Lisi, I love you. Are you ready for bedtime? Yeah, my school supplies. Your school supplies. I like my school supplies. Lisi, Lisi, you're missing something. Go put your pajamas on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good child. As soon as she gets home from school, she takes her clothes off. <laughs> Especially her pants. Which I don't blame. I, I want to do the same thing. <laughs> okay. So I'm cutting these little jump stitches. You can't really see this one, but I'm going to cut it anyway. So you just get underneath, cut, and then I have fingernails, so I could pull them up. If you don't have fingernails, you can use some tweezers. Okay, that looks good. Oh, I got low battery. Sorry if it froze. Um, okay, but you can see it up close. All right, so now let's go over here. All right. Uh, let me try and see if I can put it up here again. very messy table we got going on here. All right. So, my iron's still on. I don't need it anymore. Unplug that. Okie dokie. So, I'm going to take the pins out. That's it. Please. Okay, so now this topper, it just pulls off. So it, it really, it tears right along the seam of the, and this is where all that fleece was stuck. But I can pull it. I got a little gummy right there, but when we spray it with water, it'll go away. All right. And then it just pulls right off. And for the areas that you can't get it, to pull off. It is soluble in water. Okay, give that away. So I keep a little spray bottle of water. And you can see my placement marks really showed up when I, um, when I sprayed the water, they kind of come back at first and then they disappear. The, the wetter it is, the more these these lines will disappear, but I don't, and this is just an old towel, um, I keep to wipe away any topper that's kind of, um, when you have like a big piece of topper, it gets kind of gummy. And so I'll wipe it away and you could see like the pile come up now. So you see where it, it really helps to have that topper on there because your, your threads would get lost. Okay, still think I see some fleece, but it blends in with the towel right there. I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't mess it up. Okay, so that's there. But I usually don't like to make my stuff soaking wet. Oh, I guess we could pull it off here too. Okay, so this is on the tear away. Can you see? Um, so this is the same thing. We're gonna just tear this away. And it's left with this. I'm done with that. And now that's the back of the design. They have some loose threads. My other scissors. Okay. Um, I might trim them just a little bit. But not really. Nothing drastic. Just the long ones that are sticking. Hey, 
chewy pants. Uh, sorry, they didn't see you. Okay, so you can tear this away. You could tear this away inside of here if you want to. I'm not too worried about it since this is the inside of the hood. Um, but now on this side, we still have those placement marks. And see, some of it went away with water. It has to be like really soaking wet, but I find a Tide pin gets them off really, usually easily. If I wanna be a little quicker than the water and not have to drench my item. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so now we're ready to make the actual towel. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to take this off. That's going to get cut off anyway. Okay. We are going, so take your towel where your design is and fold it in half like this. And make sure where your point is here is really where you want it to be. It's the middle of the design. So I made the design right in the middle, so that should be good. And then we're going to take this over to the serger and we're going to serge that line. If you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch and try and make it to where it covers the edge a little bit, but it's okay. I mean, I just, it's going to fray up in the washing machine after you, after you wash it, but it's not that big a deal because it's, it's on the inside of the hood. Okay, sorry if I'm running behind with answering all the questions. Let's see. Let's see my serger. Okay, so this is my serger. I linked it down below, but I believe this model is discontinued. But they have another model that is pretty much exactly the same thing. I want to say it was 1034DX. I have it linked below. But they have another model that's more common. That is pretty much the same thing. But unfortunately, both sergers are like really hard to find right now and are ridiculously expensive. I got mine for $125. So um, if you're looking to get one, you might want to wait um, until Brother starts manufacturing more because like all of these machines are super hard to find right now. Um, I did find the PE800, the newer version of mine. Swing Design has it. Um, and they had it the best price that I saw. Um, and I think Sewing Machine Plus had it, but it was more expensive. Um, my sewing machine, I saw Amazon did have it in stock the other day, and it was a decent price. It was like $170. Um, and then the sergers are like ridiculous. Don't buy one because they're overpriced right now. But this is my serger. And I'm going to turn it on. And it has like a blade here, so it's going to cut and then it's going to sew. I don't know if you're familiar with the serger, but it finishes raw seams. And I'm not that much of a sewing person. Miss Carol can probably explain it better than I can. I've only used this to make hooded towels and um, burp cloths. I know there's so much more that I could do with it. I just haven't dove into it yet. So I'm just going to, I'm going to start at this end and just put this on there. Oops. And then I'm just going to hold these edges together here. Make sure it's feeding and how I want it to. Okay, so that is done. I'm gonna cut that. So now. 
we have a hood. And I just gotta fix the point. And now we have a little hood. And it looks nice on the back. And on the inside, it's nice and finished. It, it sews it on, you know, around the edges there. And then now you can see that this towel is kind of long and narrow. So we got a lot of space here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna go back to the serger and I'm gonna go straight across the line here and cut all of this off because we don't need all of this section here. Okay. Where am I here? That looks good. Okay, so I'm just lying this flat and kind of eyeballing it. I want to have a little bit of space here because this is where I'm going to iron this on to the bathtub. I mean, um, what you call, uh, sew this on to the bath towel, but I don't need that much. So I'm going to go about right there. Actually, just like the width of the presser foot, I think will be good. So that my towel, the hood will run there if I'm doing this right. No, let me try this again. This is a little better, I think. Oops. So this is my hood. And now I'm going to sew this line. So now I have a finished edge here. And I'm gonna sew this line just with the regular sewing machine um, on the blue bath towel. So yeah, I'm sorry I'm missing everybody's comments and stuff. I just want to get this done and then I'm going to sit down and go through all of them. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So here's my bath towel. Let me back this up here. Okay. So bath towel. And now I'm just going to lay this on my craft table and figure out where I'm going to put so I'm gonna sew the hood on the inside. So this little lap that I have, and I'm probably gonna put the line that I'm gonna sew right on top of this um, seam here on this towel. So I'm gonna make sure my hood is up a little bit, and then I'm gonna sew right along here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that um, so that it goes right where I want it. And I'm gonna pin it. I want it, I think I'm gonna sew it on this side so that I could see, I want my stitch to look nice. And I might try to find a blue thread so that it doesn't stand out. Cause I'm, I'm very, I'm bad about, I stitch everything in white. <laughs> but on this towel, it's gonna stand out. So I'll see if I have some thread that can match it. So let's see. Am I being slow tonight? What time is it? Oh yeah. Been doing this for an hour and a half. My husband always asks me, he's like, so how long are you gonna take? And I'm like, I'm try I'm gonna try and be an hour. He's like, so you're gonna be two hours? Yeah, probably. It just depends on the project. And y'all know I got trouble where I can't stop talking and I go on tangents. But if you were doing this at home and like 
you, you know, you saw the steps, you knew what you had to do and just went for it. It doesn't take that long at all. It's just because I talk too much. Okay. So I pinned this and now I'm going to bring it over to the sewing machine. All right. Turn this baby on. Okay. Do I have... So one thing I learned is, so because I'm not a sewer, but I can use embroidery thread on the sewing machine. So I think this is almost a decent color. I'm going to look. I do have some sewing machine thread. I have this one. That's pretty much the same. I need more variety. I need some more colors. Let's see what I got in here. Okay, I have this, but this is like a sky blue. It's purple. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go with the embroidery thread. Um, so I was gonna change. My, I'm only gonna change the top thread. I'm gonna leave my bobbin as white. I do use my pre-wound bobbins for the embroidery machine I use them on the sewing machine and they work fine but granted all I do is sew masks really oh what's wrong something's caught here look sometimes people talk about tension problems can you see that this is looped underneath this piece of thread I don't know if you could see that but like I just tried to pull it and you see how it's there that could be a problem Those are things you can check for. Okay, now it's good. It must have been from when I hand wound it. It got caught up. Okay. All right, so I'm just threading my machine real quick. Not very good at it. There we go. Okay, so I got that blue color on the top and I'm keeping my white bobbin. And I I'm gonna stitch it this way. So that I can see the line, but then I have to pull my pins out. So, like I said, I'm not the seamstress. This is not my area of expertise. So this is probably not being as done as well as some of y'all that have been sewing longer would do. <laughs> but I just have a regular straight stitch. And a back stitch. That's one thing I do now. I know I'm supposed to back stitch. I have pins in here, but I'm trying not to hit them.
not doing too good here. Got my back stitch. Okay. And where are my scissors? Sorry if this looks all over the place. pins out and if you're like me and you're not very good at sewing a straight line we use thread that is similar to the color of the towel you could barely see my crooked line I tried to stitch right on top of the the top stitch of the the towel itself but that's it so <laughs> baby June has a hooded towel that's it. And then if you want to fold it all cute, you can fold it in thirds. Like this. So fold it up. Sorry, my battery's going dead. Okay, and fold it up. And then roll it halfway in. And roll it halfway in like this and then just pull the top over and put it on the back something like this see I'm not very good but you can like if you were doing this for your Etsy shop and you want to take pictures you could put another towel on top inside of here to um to fluff it up but this is it and then I still got to trim. I got some thread to trim, but that's all. Okay, so now I can finally go back and look at all the questions. Okay. Whew. I'm glad we got this done. So now I'm going to put this baby present in the mail with um, the, I made him a bib, which he'll, I think he's nine months now. So he'll still be able to use a bib because he'll be teething. And what else did I make him? I made him a bird cloth, which I don't know if he needs a bird cloth anymore, so I probably need to make him something else. <laughs> but I hope y'all like this. I think it came out pretty cute. And uh, like I did last Christmas, I gave all the kids hooded towels for Christmas presents. I, but um, I was in a rush because, you know me, I'm going to wait until the night before we're supposed to see them for Christmas to make the hooded towels. So all they got was their name across. <laughs> They didn't get any applique. They didn't get any designs. They just got their name. <laughs> so I was like, name, stitch, sew, done. Next one. Name, stitch, sew, done. All right. So we, my phone, I can't look at it while we're recording, but my phone is on 10%. But I will try to answer as many questions I can before it dies. All right. Thank y'all. Okay. Okay, Delia says she has towels to make for all her blessings. Just have to find the time to do it. Yeah, you can You can really, you know, I take forever because I talk so much. But if I wasn't talking, I think I can get this done in 30-ish to 40 minutes. Because the stitching, according to the computer, the stitching time was 17 minutes. Um, according to the embroidery machine. So, between hooping placement, making the design, cutting the applique, and then stitching a couple straight lines with the serger and the sewing machine, you can knock it out probably in 30 minutes if you, real quick. So, yay, Laura, she says she loves Friday nights. I do too. <laughs> um, okay, Sheila says she's not a seamstress either. Can't wait to try this project. You will get it. If I can, if I can do it, you could do it. <laughs> um, my, my expertise in sewing right now is just making masks. I make, like, uh, we've made these before in one of the lives, these style masks. 
this is the extent of my sewing right now. I did make a little dress I was very proud of for my girls. I don't know where it is right now, but when they're American Girl dolls, I made a dress for that and I was very proud of myself. So I have yet to make my girls a real dress. <laughs> um, oh, I'm talking about teaching. Yeah, Brenda says she's amazed at how much I get done. I got my hands full of work and family. Yes. But this is this is my fun time. This is my me time. And now that I told my husband, I'm like, um, I have to do, like, I've told people I'm doing YouTube on Friday nights at 7. So now that I've, like, said that I have announced that, he he's like, okay, I'll leave you alone on Friday night. <laughs> Let me have my me. This is the only me time I get. <laughs> Um, yeah, and Christina said, that's why I, I like this group so much. I feel like we all understand the mom work balance and everyone is so nice and supportive. Yes, they are. Yeah, we're, we're here, girl. We all feel each other's pain. <laughs> okay, needless to say, my fiance does not understand and always asks me how long it's going to take. Yeah, my, my husband still, he he knows me and he knows I'm slow. I'm slow when it comes to everything in life. And like even when I'm at work and I'm doing um, an experiment or I'm do, you know, I'm in the middle of something and he's like, okay, so how long are you going to take? And I'm like, well, I got to do this and this has to go for 30 minutes and this. And I'm like, I'll be home. I'll, I could leave at, you know, in two hours. And he's like, so really, you mean you're going to leave in three hours? I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> Let's say I'm going to make something. 40 minutes, hour and a half later. You done? No. <laughs> All right. I think I've scrolled up a bunch. Okay, here we go. CX, since the hood is over the child's head, do you need to put tender touch on the back side so the soft stuff on the baby's clothing? Um, I've not done that for towels. Um, you can. I don't know how well the tender touch is going to stick on the back of the towel, though, to be honest. But you can try. It might come off when you wash it, and you just have to, or the edges might come off when you wash it, and you just have to re-iron it down. But I think it's okay. It doesn't, the only part that feels a little bit is this, this bottom of the J feels a tiny bit rough. But it's not bad. Yeah, I'm still videoing. <laughs> He's coming up here looking for me. <laughs> no, no, no. You are not still videoing. I am still videoing. Hey, y'all. It's Carly's husband. She's been on here for 17 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Told y'all. <laughs> Where's my Elise? Elise, you still don't have pants on. I've been talking to Kyle Plow for 19 hours now, and you still videoing. Okay, I'm almost done. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all are doing great. <laughs> Well, I made this for James's little boy. Oh, James for Jude. Mm -hmm. Okay, go away. Kyle okay. says he loves you. Hi, Kyle. At least, <laughs> not my shirt. So he also sips while I am sipping and stitching, if you can't tell. Sips. <laughs> go downstairs. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. Carly, it's been three hours. It's not been three hours. It's been two hours. Cross stitch. <laughs> okay. Elise, get up and share. Oh, hi, Ed. See, he likes this. Um. I already did. Oh, you did already. Okay. Oh yeah, Carol's husband. He loves Elise, huh? Okay. Uh. Alright, thanks for the tutorial. I can't wait to make these for my grands. Will you do a tutorial for the hoop zipper bag? Yes, I want to. I need to do a trial run myself though before I show y'all. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I haven't even told them I have to do my neighbor's blanket. <laughs> Men can't count. No, he can't. Um, hi, Wendy. Oh, I'm sorry you've been sick. Okay. 
I know, right? So he's already, so Jane's talking about he needs to share me what about when they watch sports. He's already, like, told me tomorrow don't bother him after 2.30 because LSU game's coming on. So I'm going to go do that to him while he's watching LSU game. <laughs> Been watching game for 17 hours. <laughs> um, okay, can any letter be made with applique? Yes. So, oh, I wanted to, okay, before we get off, I wanted to show y'all a few things. I don't know how well this is going to show on the computer. So if you see me on there. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Later. Okay, let's go to Facebook group. Okay, so... Okay, well, first she asked about this. So, can you see? This is my computer. Okay. When you buy the applique alphabet... It comes, so I go to this little A icon at the top, and then these are all my alf all my fonts, all my alphabets I have installed. Um, so this was from Creative Applique, which is, I like theirs because all of their fonts start with CA, so they're all grouped together because this, this is in alphabetical order. So here it is, Farmhouse Lemonade Applique. So I choose that. And see, it says ABC, and then I could choose it. Like I could type, I could type my whole name, but it's way too big. Um, so I could type my whole name, and you know, it can do any letter. Or if I wanted to do, um, you know, a hooded towel for Elise, and she doesn't have one with her name, <laughs> she'd probably make her one. <laughs> um, I can do just the E. And you can make it a little bit wider. Try not to go over 20%. So see, like here it tells me I changed my width 120%. So that would be where I would stop. Um, so I can make it a little wider if I wanted to. And then I could add another font. Pick a different one. Like the new balloon one. And then type Elise. Um and put that either like right over it or at the bottom or above it. I don't know how it, good it looks with this. But we could do E. And then if we wanted to do the is four again, but do it in a different font. This is that Davidson font I used earlier. So same thing you just do like that and play around with it but yeah you can do you know when you buy the font it comes with the whole alphabet okay then the other thing I wanted to show y'all this is the Facebook group um, it's my view since I'm the administrator but for y'all all of this should look the same and if you go here to units this is what I'm trying to organize and make nice so Unit one is about this group, and I'm gonna, once I figure it out, I'm probably gonna make a little video to show you how to navigate it. But this is just a little introduction about me. You can find me at my website, carlybell.com. You can find me on YouTube, where y'all are now. And I'm also on Instagram at carlybell. And I have a carlybell business page. So that's unit one. Um, then unit two, is supplies and I'm gonna add other supply lists but this is a general supply list and this has everything this has the thread um, talks about bobbins the pre-wound bobbins all the stabilizers and links to all the stabilizers all the the stuff I used tonight like the fabric marker the tide pin the spray adhesive all that there and then I call those useful supplies and then like one-time purchase supplies, a hoop set, a thread stand, the scissors you might need to buy later if they get dull, but usually last a while. My little iron, this is that Panasonic iron I was talking about that's similar to mine, ruler, rotary cutter, cutting mat, and then the software I use is in Brilliance, that's this here. So all of that is there, so you can always go back and look at that if you need it. And then I added a resources tab, and so I'm slowly adding to this where you can buy blanks 
and here's a whole list with links of where I buy blanks and then common embroidery turns. So if you're brand new to embroidery and I say words like jump stitch and floating and um, tender touch, you know, heat and bond, you don't know what I'm talking about, this is kind of like a definition list. So you can go and look at that. So I hope that's been helpful. Sorry, I haven't been looking to see comments, but um, I'm working on the Facebook group to make it uh, more user-friendly to access information. And then I also have my blog, which I'm not as very, I'm not as good as posting on my blog as I am on the Facebook group. So I really need to go and make blog posts with all those things too on my website. So I hope that helps. Okay. Um, my baby face is watching NASCAR all weekend, so I don't bother him and he doesn't bother me. <laughs> Okay, um, so you must have software. So just to talk about software for a second, I love my software. I use it all, every project I do. Um, but if you are just getting into embroidery and you're a little hesitant on what you should buy and how much money, because it, you know, it's $140 for the program. So um, it's, it's not cheap. But for fonts, there is a free program you can try it's called In Brilliance Express. I think I linked it. I linked it down below this video. That program is free, but it only lets you do fonts. It only lets you open fonts. Um, I think I, what I'm going to do, I think, because I can't put it on my computer because I already have the full software. I'm going to put it on my husband's computer and so I can play around with it and understand it better. So I explain it to y'all. But from my understanding, you can open BX fonts, but you should also be able to open any other format. Uh, so like brother uses PES, Janome uses something else. Any format can type it out. I'm pretty sure though you can't resize the font though once you type it out. You have to use it in the size that it comes in. So if it's a one inch font, you can only you know, use it as one inch. You can't, like I adjusted that applique font to make it wider. I don't think you'd be able to do that in the free express version. So, um, but that's something that you can try. And then they also have a demonstration version of in brilliance that's free, but, and it'll let you try all the features of all of their programs, but it won't let you save any files so that you could then put it on your embroidery machine and stitch it out. It's just to let you play with 